It's clear that there's a labor of love in this, and that's the kind of thing that I appreciate, I think, more than anything else that, you know, people are, are making a film that they seem to, like, actually care about. Um, I so, think I think all of it is like that these days, you know, so much of it. Music has to be, it, it always is that, right? And I think, you know, for, for some of us, we've been able to, you know, sign these contracts and then it becomes a career, then it becomes a way of life and a lifestyle. Um, and then, you know, oftentimes you can be sort of beholden to the, uh, you know, I have to go make this album or this film or whatever versus I want to, you know, and I think that's the fun of this uh, kind of all these little cottage industries that we have with films and books and music and all these things is it's back to just just do it for the fun of it, you know, and, um, you know, after you've been around the track a couple of times, it's like, yeah, why did we start doing this? Oh, yeah, because it was fun to be in a band. Oh, yeah, it was fun to pick up a camera and go in a tunnel and sift through bat shit and film a film and call it dwellers, you know? <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, these, these things are supposed to be fun. That's why we, that's why we tune into them. Right. So then what about the film industry sort of like ticked your interest to kind of jump into it now? Because this is a relatively new uh, expedition for you guys. From it, it, it completely. I mean, look, honestly, the whole thing came about because Drew approached uh, me about it. Um, and, you know, we decided to just put up a little imprint called Ellison Films, just like everything, you know, the record company. All right. Ellison Music Production. We'll call it EMP Label Group for short. You know, hey, you want to have coffee? Sure. Ellison Coffee Company. <laughs> you know, so you just kind of lead with your strength, um, which I guess in my case is, you know, my name, um, you know, has a familiarity to it. So um, and it, it's helped, you know, with the, with the producing of the film. Um, you know, Drew did the entire film on his own. It's all him, um, the creative, the idea, the, the, the filming, everything about it. Um, and, you know, look, if, if through my, you know, connections and, you know, we've got distribution through our film company and everything, uh, to be able to get that out through the digital and physical um, outlets and everything, it's, it's uh, just makes the story, f you know, fun. It's, it's great collaborating um more on the kind of on the business side of of stuff so right now drew and i are actually talking about another film um you know so it, it's funny how you just kind of get in the room and you just go you know and you kind of you, you you make it up as you go really with all this stuff so with this production uh elson film elson films was created with mm -hmm. horror in mind um would this end up being uh, a horror label or do you guys have any plans on sort of jumping genres uh, anytime soon. Well, it's kind of like when we started EMP Label Group. The reason I called it that, it's an acronym for Ellison Music Production. Um, but the reason I called it that is I liked having something. I thought of, you know, look, I grew up on Capitol Records uh, and they also had EMI was the parent company that owned Capitol. <clears throat> and EMI also was a label itself. Um, but they also had Blue Note for jazz, for their jazz titles. Um, I think they had a, a Christian label, you know, they just, they had sort of things segregated under the umbrella. And, you know, so the same thing could apply obviously for Ellison films, um, you know, to be able to do imprints, you know, and bring other things in uh, Ellison films is kind of the thing that, you know, that's the EMI, you know, it's sort of the big uh, overarching umbrella of the thing. And then, um, you know, people have actually approached us about um, bringing some things in. And I thought, look, if, if we've got the, you know, the, the channels for this, like we do, you know, again, both digital and physical for, you know, Blu-ray and DVD and, and all that. It's like, what a cool thing to have for people that, you know, nothing's more frustrating than being a creator. Like we all are. And you've got this idea or you've got this, this master recording or film and you're like, how, where do I go with this? What do I do? Um, and that's, I think where I found success with the MP early on was being able to put some records out for friends and, and I, I feel that, you know, Ellison Films is the same thing. Um, it, it initially, it, it's always going to be there for us to do our own thing, uh, kind of first and foremost. But if we can help uh, get some other people's films to market <clears throat> that, that we like and, you know, could, could have some success, then I think that's a that's a cool thing. And I told Drew, I said, look, you got to like kind of, you know, you know, be part of this with me. You know, it's it's. Uh, I also play bass in a rock band. That's my other kind of full-time gig I have, you know? So uh, I can't every day be dealing with film stuff. And, and so, you know, Drew's got a good, uh, 
uh, I'll, I'll shut up and let him talk is he's, he's got his hands on the pulse of, of what's going on in, in that world. So um, it's, it's a great partnership. So then Drew, let me ask you, I, I was reading, of course, that this is a, uh, 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 amalgamation, let's say of the Blair Witch project and Chud. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of get into like where your idea was to meld those two and sort of like how this all came about? Oh yeah. Well, uh, <clears throat> ever since I was a, very young, young kid. I, I always loved the movie Chud. There, there's a, something about it I always loved. You know, it's, it's like, it's like a, you know, there's like comfort food. That's like, that's like a comfort movie for me, you know? And uh, so about eight or nine years ago, I, uh, I got in touch with the guy that wrote Chud and we we're just talking and all. And I was like, well, what if, you know, because nothing ever happened after this, there's this, you know, Bud the Chud, the sequel, which had nothing to do with Chud. It was like a, you know, like a zombie comedy. And I was like, well, is there anything going on with that? Is there any idea like a remake could happen? And he was like, well, I don't know, man. And, you know, it's like, what kind of ideas you got? And so I had this idea of like a found footage remake of Chud. And it would be zero dollars. And it just matter just, you know, working out where the rights are and everything. So like we hunted down where they were. And it turned out that uh, he only owned the musical rights to Chud. And uh, which tells you what kind of deals they were making for films back in the 80s, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and so, and ironically, he's actually working on a musical for Chud with Daniel Stern, who was in Chud as well. So and there's a couple of articles about that out there already. So I really hope that happens because that'd be amazing to see. And then, um, and so, you know, all these years later, I, I just kind of always had the idea, just to, the treatment for that, I, for what would have been a found footage remake of, of Chud. And uh, and kind of looked it over again. I was like, this could totally work on its own, you know? And then I, I got a hold of David and then we, we were talking about it because he and I you know, knew each other for a couple of years uh, through various projects. And, um, and he, he was totally down for the idea. And, uh, and then I, I just gathered together the troops and went to Ohio, found this tunnel. Uh, it was just completely abandoned. And uh, we went down there and collectively we shot it, I think, over like four or five days. It was, it was, like, it was like everything. Uh, two days in the tunnel. One day in the tunnel with uh, me, Doug, and James. And uh, the rest of it's mostly overdubs, believe it or not, where, where you know you may see just uh, just me in camera, but you hear Doug and James, so it's it's a lot of uh, you know cheap new movie magic for sure. And uh, and uh, and 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 yeah, then it's we uh, I, I ended up doing all the creature sounds for the movie for the movie too, uh, believe it or not, and I ended up uh, editing everything and just kind of just got it done because the the whole impetus behind that was. Uh, Back in probably December, did David informed me that uh, we were going to be screening it at the Mad Monster Party in uh, North Carolina, which happened uh, a couple weeks ago. And so in December, I was like, "Oh man, I got to better get this thing done." And so it kind of almost became like the scene in the movie where, where David's like, "Drew, where's the movie yet? Where's the movie?" And so I uh, dove in and I got it edited, and uh, uh, finally uh, wrapped it up, and, and we were able to screen it. And it, and it, and just really uh, happy at the way it. Uh, with the way people were have been reacting to it so, uh, so far. I thought it was kind of an interesting creative decision to have no music in it. But then I read that you guys were either going to make or have make a, a soundtrack. Is this true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Well, it's funny I because I asked Drew that. We, we uh, I guess, was what, maybe April uh, last year, 2020. You know, we're all shut down. Um, <clears throat> I was pretty deep into some other music uh, projects at the time recording. And Drew just hit me. He said, uh, we we're working on... Um, finishing up the rockstar hitman book that we put out uh, back in december and we were you know tightening up the final bits of that and he said hey i to play bass on something i said sure and um so he sent it over as just a cool little three chord thing and so i just literally just plugged in right back here and just <laughs> threw a track down and mike heller from fear factory uh i think co-wrote it with drew and was playing drums on it and kind of producing it and and um, I thought, this is really good. And he goes, want to play another one? So he sent like another five or six. He's thinking, oh, I had like a, an album's worth of material sitting in, on my inbox. And um, and so we just made a plan uh, to get together over in Los Angeles in July of, of 2020. So we could all get together. Um, and I, I think I what, recorded like, I don't know, nine, ten songs or something in a, in a couple of days. And, um, and uh, so Vin... Uh, Dombrowski from Sponge is uh, is singing on it, and ironically, he was kind enough to loan us this photo of him. He is he is Sledge. He is our rock star on Rockstar Hitman, and uh, so me and Drew, Vin, and Mike, we all got together at Mike's studio in Los Angeles uh, for a couple of days, and um, and yeah, we have this record done under a little band name we're calling Lucid. 
Um, and, uh, you know, Vin, as he was talking with Drew, they, they started, you know, he started kind of dipping into the, the narrative of the book and kind of pulling lyric titles or, you know, titles and some lyric things out um, <clears throat> on that. So, yeah, it's funny how, you know, Drew and I are working on a book. He had dwellers. Next thing you know, we've got music. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about having it be a, a soundtrack for the movie. But as, as Drew pointed out, it's found footage. So, you know, it's not like, you know, some guy comes in on a motorcycle with a hot chick and there's like a freaking Judas Priest song playing. You know what I mean? It's not like that kind work, of a yeah. film. It's a, you know, the found footage thing just it sets up very different. And I was like, God, you know, you're right. I didn't even think about that. So. Um, which again, this is why I defer to, to Drew on the film stuff because he's really, uh, you know, he's 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 authentic with it, and 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 I think that's what comes across is is the authenticity of it. Um, but there is a place for all of it for the book, for the the film. Obviously, is is getting some great attention right now, and and this this music um, we we planned on you know, probably popping that out later this year. And who knows, we might become the greatest horror con band ever because I don't know what else is out there to go play, <laughs> to play shows. So it is kind of fun that we have all these things. And, and I was saying to Drew, you know, I've been doing a lot of these conventions over the years, uh, just getting invited in as a, you know, rock star guy, but it's fun to now come in as, as a content creator, you know, to bring the film in uh, like we did with mad monster, um, <clears throat> you know, and have, you know, to be able to talk to them and say, hey, look, you know, we've, we've got this band. We could put together a, a musical night because Saturday night's usually the party, kind of the big VIP party for the for the fans, for uh, even for the, the, the celebrities that are there. So, it, you know, to have a musical component we can bring to the table and um, just, you know, through serendipity, just <clears throat> just for no other reason than just we just went ahead and did it we've we're you know can bring something to the party and and kind of create our own little pop-up show which is pretty cool being that this is so run and gun can you kind of talk about uh the creature effects because you know, there there was a couple scenes i don't want to run much towards you know the end and i was kind of curious about how that was done oh it was actually my wife's sister i did the the the, the hands and uh it, it's really it really simple it was like pretty much like a paper mache thing you know and 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 my whole uh, i you know uh, ideology with that is like you know if you look at something for more than two seconds in a movie, you can tell it's fake, you know, but as long as it's like this really, really quick, this, this as quick as humanly possible, then you could get away with anything. It could be like a Lego and you see it super quick and it can still startle you a little bit, you know? <clears throat> and, uh, and then the, the one uh, big, uh, the, like the, the, I guess if you want to call it the money shot, it, 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 you know, you watch the movie of, of the, the, the face, you know, uh, the, <laughs> that's actually a statue of uh, Belial from Basket Case. Believe it or not. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And James L. Edwards, who was, uh, he actually also directed the movie Her Name is Krista. That's the first thing I ever acted in. It's the most romantic necrophilia love story ever told. And, uh, <laughs> and, and in his house, he's got like a horror museum and he, he had this like Belial statue that was custom made. And it looks just a little bit off from Belial. And we were there doing like some overdubs for dwellers. And I was like, you know, we don't show the creature in the movie at all. Let me try something. So this, I just had the cameras walked up to it and went, yoink. And then uh, that I, I just kind of fit it in there, like uh, like uh, the, the way it, the way it is, and uh, hopefully it, it it has the effect that that, that it needs to have. But uh, that, that's the story behind that. So then, okay, let me ask you this, then, guys: When is the film being released? Uh, is there a tentative date? Uh, yeah, October twelfth will be the street date, so we'll be able to you know put out the Blu-ray, uh, DVD, the digital streaming services, and everything. So yeah, it's nice. Now that now we wanted to premiere it first at at Mad Monster. And then from there, I mean, things moved along so quickly um, in these film festival invitations have been great and, you know, being accepted there. Um, so as we head into Halloween, of course, it's always a good time to release horror films. <laughs> so uh, um, and like I said, that's probably around the time we're looking to probably drop the, you know, the music thing with 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 Lucid, with the, that record that we did. There'll be a second rock star hitman book probably coming out around that time. So we just, you know, it's kind of a perfect uh all roads sort of angled toward that little period of time. I that hope one day it. to see you guys both do a rock opera or I guess a metal opera. That's, that would that's be nice. my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we could do that in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> Costa Rican rock opera. <laughs> All right, guys. I do appreciate you. Thanks, Lance. See you. All right, you be so safe, much, my friend. Bye. Turn the fucking camera on now, James. Uh, when I say capture everything, you capture fucking everything, okay? 
Everything 